Oh, Maron, what are you doing? Hey, like, comment, subscribe, share. Do everything you got to do, man. It goes a long way, trust me. You like my shirt? Get straight into the episode. The world at the moment is a very, very dim place. And I know this podcast we record, boys, we like to make it somewhere where people can come to and escape. You know what I mean? And we do it ourselves. We come here, we escape all our problems. You know, we talk about sport. It's a big reason why we just cover sports. But, bro, this past week, honestly, as as an Arab Muslim, as uh, obviously, even if you're not tied into it or anything, you're going to feel it. You're going to watch the videos. You're going to see the, the, the bad things that we've all seen. And I just couldn't get past not talking about it, bro. I'll be very honest with you. Um... TK, you don't really have to try. I mean, you can just ask or whatever it is you want to ask. If there's any questions or anything, I'm, oh, I'm more than happy to educate. But yeah, what's happening overseas, bro, is something very, very tragic. Um, it's And you know what's crazy about this? It's been happening for so, so long that our people are just immune to it. Like it's just now we're seeing it, social media pumping this and pumping that. It's just a crazy, crazy time to be, to be seeing all this. But I've got three points that I have here. The first thing is I pray for the Palestinians and of course anyone that is innocent. So any child, any grandmother, anyone that's innocent in this situation, I pray for them with my whole heart. I hope that they get peace. But sadly, 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 the ones that are affected the most are the Palestinian people and I pray for them, bro, like so much. Um, I remember growing up and this is when people tell me, yeah, but did you see what this guy done and what this guy done? I remember clearly and anyone that's probably Arab, same age as me, remembers this one image of a guy, of a father protecting his son. And wallah, it's one of the most traumatic photos I ever, like that photo in my brain, I could see that photo no matter how old I was. I can't remember how old I was when I first seen it, but that image is in my head forever, bro. And like, it's it scars me really. Um, I know we don't look like, you know, we get upset about things and that we look like we're always having a good time, which we are, we, we, we're pretty happy people. But in moments like this, bro, like this is this, the other day, I deleted my Snapchat, right? And I just deleted it. I was just, this, that's it. I, just, I don't want it anymore. And I was like, I'm going to beast mode now. That's it. You know, me and Mems always have these talks about beast mode and being hungry again. And because we, we, we lack sometimes. And I was just started to, f you know, get into this groove where life was so going well. And bro, then I see what's happening and I'm like, fuck, bro. It just dragged me all the way down. And I'm not, like, it's just sad, bro. And it affects all of us. So first things first, I pray for the Palestinians. I hope everything gets better for them very, very quickly. Um, and whoever's, you know, affected by this, I pray for you. Um, another thing is the protests. Now, I was going to speak about this because we seen the protest that happened last week and it was very messy. Um, this is the problem, bro. Um, we think that going somewhere, protesting and making a big noise, it's a very good thing, right? It's, it's great to protest and great to voice our concerns. But just religiously, I'm going to go into religion a bit, boys. Just religiously. It's never the right thing to do. The right thing to do in these moments is pray and be closer to your God. You know what I mean? And just, I'm just speaking of a Muslim, you know, of, of a Muslim faith, of what we believe is the best thing to do. Um, there's going to be many, many people that go to these protests that are just there for snaps. That are just there for, uh, what is it? You can, we can cut uh, this out. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to talk. Go okay. Go there's yeah. going to be so many people that go to these events just to be part of it, you know, just to feel like, yeah, bro. I went to the protest because, like, it's not right, bro. Wallah, like, if you really, really have a heart and soul for these people, what's happening to our people, you wouldn't do this. You would, and I'm not saying going to the protest is wrong. Don't even, like, don't even, take it however you want. I really don't care. But the first things first, bro, do you pray? Do you respect your parents? Do you fast? When it's time to fast, do you fast properly? Like, do you teach your non-Muslim friends? If I ask you a question, can you answer them? You can't. Like, uh, some of us can't. And, I'll, I'm, bro, I'm the first person to say this. I'm not a... Uh, Fucking angel You just all know that You know what I mean We oh, all you're swear my little angel <laughs> <laughs> we, all are, we all are You know Have our bad traits And whatnot We're all sinners In the end of the day No matter what religion you are You're a sinner That's how we are We're human But I just think that There's a better solution to That than going to a protest And um, do, do you want my thoughts About protesting? Yes please Let me hear it My thoughts about protesting Is You are not Gonna change Oh sorry Yeah You are not gonna change What's happening by protesting all that protesting does is, is it distracts you from your life distracts you from your work and i understand you're passionate and you want to get out there and you want to scream do you think they're listening do you think is israel or okay i don't want to say that but, but do you think anyone will stop what they're doing stop war crimes because you're out in the street burning flags yelling gas to jews and and causing a scene taking videos and, and yelling into microphones do you think that's going to change the situation it's not it's not pray 
keep everyone in your heart. Be a good person. Don't add to the to the crap, and go take care of your family, and 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 go live life knowing that and being grateful for the life that you have. Big topic today. Being grateful. Be Big gra- topic. Be grateful for the life that you have. I understand the protesting is coming from a good place, but you're not changing anything. And if anything, you're playing right into the game that they want you to play where they want to divide and conquer. That's what this is. Divide and conquer. They divide the... This is a, this is bigger than Palestine and Israel, uh, in it, my opinion. It's, it's massive. This is way bigger than, than, than what's going on in the Middle East. And it's working because we can't think for ourselves. We can't. We say... 50 people going to a protest and then it becomes 100 and then 1,000 and then 10,000 people are in the street. They've left their lives. They've put everything on pause. They've, you know, tuned into the media. They, they're letting the media crap get into their I just, minds I, I and, just and wish, they're turning on fellow humans. Yeah, I just wish we were smart. I wish we were smart I, about I, this. I just wish people, like no matter what you're protesting for, right? I just wish you were so smart. Because if you cared that much, okay, which I care. I, I'm sure No, no, I'm pretty care. sure they care. Yeah, I'm pretty, you, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not... Uh, the message, or this whole protest yeah. message, is the people that are going there to be a ma- to be yeah. funny and to be haha. I'm part of a get movement. your intentions in check first, okay? Protest, yeah, no worries, it's a good thing, but just know in your heart that the protesting isn't what it's all about. As Sui said, pray, be a good person, hold compassion, and bro, us Muslims, the most do- important bit is probably give what you can give. Give what you can give. Donate. Give what you can give, whether that's your time. Mm-hmm. And you go educate people, whether that's your time and you go somewhere or if it's your money, it's a monetary donation. That's coming from the pureness of your heart. And what Mem's touched on, divide and conquer, is probably the best way to summarize it up. Because divide and conquer works by we have a purpose and we all have a purpose or a goal that we want to go to. Um, but the moment we can get you to fight, because for every person that's going to the protest, there's someone not going to the protest who believes in the same things that you believe in and is protesting for the same things that you're pro... who believes in the same things you're protest- protesting for, sorry. But by dividing and conquer, you start fighting each other and you lose sight of what the main purpose is. Um, so I think divide and conquer is one of the most smartest, oldest book uh, tricks. And we fall for it every time. And bro, it happened to African Americans. It happened to Africans in their countries. You know, like it, there's. Happened I just with want, the Aboriginals. I just want people to be very like people. It's not even have about being smart. It's about noticing. Like I, I say this because I say people say, yeah, the Jews, this, that, bro. We don't hate anyone. Like as a Muslim, as how I was raised, bro. My prophet cried for a Jew. You know what I mean? Like. And if you want another story, you can do your research. My prophet cried for a Jew because he passed away and he couldn't save him or he couldn't help him in any way. And this is a Muslim prophet. Like, our religion doesn't teach us to hate anyone. Moses was a Jew. Jesus yeah. was a Jew. Yeah, but like, yeah. I'm not going to get into all yeah, that, right? Because right. I'm not really the smartest person in that. And mm-hmm. I'll leave that to the Mashiach and stuff. But my thing is, we don't hate anyone. Like, me and Tanaka, Tanaka, me and Tanaka are different faiths. We love each other, bro. We respect each other. We don't hate anyone. The aim is never to hate anyone, but the aim is to see the one enemy. The white man, the white man that did this to the Africans, did this to the Muslims, did this to the Arabs, and I don't know. And they do it, they infiltrate, and they're so smart. It's not even smart, it's just common sense. It's We are so distracted, bro. It's crazy. Like, it's so good. It's cr- Next week, there could be a war in some country, and everyone will forget. Because for the past, I don't know how many years, and I'm, I've been getting, you know what's funny? Two weeks ago, I told you this, we had this conversation that I had a phone call with my uncle for about two hours about history. And we spoke about, about the Nazis. But the Nazis, bro, it was so no, random. We can't say that word. Two weeks ago, we were like <laughs> about this and about that, and like crazy enough. Now, I like I educated myself. I don't really know, and these are my people, bro. For so many years, they've been going through it. Now I understand everything, and now I look at it. But but the thi- the, the most important thing is we don't hate any race, any nation. Like we don't hate them. We hate the one common enemy. It's the Zionist. If you want to take bleep it out, you can bleep it out. I'm sure um, bleep it out. <laughs> and don't be surprised. This is one more thing. Don't be surprised about celebrities. Like I lost, I lost a goat this this week. LeBron James, <laughs> he's right? not the goat anyway. He's Michael, not the goat. Michael Jordan never the was the goat. Michael Jordan. Last dance? Yeah. What? Are you, are you serious? Michael but I, I I lost I lost um thing. And you know what's crazy, bro? LeBron James when the George Floyd thing happened, right? And I stand by, bro. I stand by these people. I love these people because I I told you I told you this when the World Cup happened. I told you the Africans they're talented and this and that. But then it's like, bro, you just protest, protested for this. And the same thing is happening over here and you've just turned a blind eye. And it all comes down to who pays them. Who's the guy that puts money in their pocket? Who's their bosses? In the end of the day, everyone has a boss. 
Make me what I lost this week. LeBron James, I lost this week. Floyd like, Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather was the most insecure person I've ever seen in my whole life. Showing he can't me even read. Huh? He can't read. Show me all these watches. I'm a, he can take your money wherever you want, brother. In the end of the day, your kids are never going to respect you. But yeah, bro, like celebrities are just sheep. Kyrie. And I want to give a shout out to one beautiful celebrity. Kyrie. Uh, Kyrie, off. we can talk about Kyrie, but before Kyrie, uh, Kalani. Mm, she thought, has been that. in protests in America. Like, I, I know whatever, but she's not even part of these people and she's there because and she understands. Kyrie Irving, Muhammad Ab, um, I think Abdul Rauf, the basketball player that they took his career off because he just didn't want to sing the national anthem. Muhammad Ali, my above Messi for me, the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, the greatest athlete. You ask me who the greatest athlete is, it's Muhammad Ali. And anyone, everyone can agree. Malcolm X, all these crazy, all these people who did stood up to their. You know, in the craziest enemy, uh, the people I respect. Do you I don't know what the enemies that Malcolm X was fighting are the same enemies. The same the, people, the, bro. The same enemies but it's the same people. Today. All it's the same, same enemy that all our people fight. Wallah, every ten years, fifteen years, and it happens. We're losing. Yeah, have but faith. Allah is the greatest of planners. Yeah, be strong. Have faith. Make prayer, bro. Donate wherever you can. Um, and wallah, I'm not a sheikh, bro. I, I'm not the most educated. I'm a sinner. You can say whatever you want about me, bro. I couldn't care less what you think. I know who I am. And I know what I stand for. And just educate yourselves, bro. Like, ed learn, learn, learn. It's the most important thing. I educate myself about every nationality because I don't understand what they're going through until I learn. So, yeah, that's all I want to say about this. And inshallah, uh, free, Allah frees Palestine, bro. I love everyone there. Amen. Um, boys. Seeing these, this news and all this crazy stuff that's been happening, I just wanted to sit back and, and look at... There's two other topics here. The first one, I wanted to ask you, so what are you grateful for? Because obviously you've seen the videos and it, it, it could be anything that's happening around the world, earthquakes and natural disasters, wars, poverty. I wanted to ask you, what are you grateful for? In these moments, these are the things we should think of and be very happy about where we live. TK. I love this question, bro. I know, it made you smile. Uh, yeah, I, I, lo <laughs> I love this question, man. And the reason I love this question is because I'm a first-generation immigrant. Um, what I mean by that is I came here when I was 10 years old and I've lived in Australia since and it's given me a l opportunities and the ability to do so much and I'm so grateful for it. And there's a line that I hear people say and it doesn't sit well with me. I understand why people say it, but one of that statements is Sydney is shit. I don't like Sydney or oh, wherever you live. I don't like this place. That's me. <laughs> That's me. He's, ta <laughs> he's taking shots. <laughs> I'm not taking shots. No, no, we don't. We'll speak about it. That's yeah. the next topic. Yeah, we'll yeah. speak about it. Shooting shots. And the reason why that really affects me is because I lived long enough and I've seen enough living in a non-developed country to see how hard life can be. Which country was that? Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. And what people don't recognize is we are where we are because in the lottery, we got lucky. You don't get to choose who your parents are and you most certainly don't get to choose where you're born. So as easily as you have a good life, you could easily have a shit life. And when people ask me what am I grateful for, I'm first and foremost, I'm grateful for the life I have. Yes, do I have everything I need? No. Do I, am I where I want to be in life? Ideally, no. But it's not the be all and end all and it's not what defines me as a person. I'm just on a journey and I go through that day to day to day to day to day. And the reason why I say I'm grateful for that is because as easily as I, come here, I came here, sorry, I could easily still be back there. I easily could still be in the trenches. I easily, things could have worked out slightly different and I'd still be over there. I wouldn't know anything about Australia. Australia would be a place I don't even know nothing about. I wouldn't know about the greater Western world. I wouldn't have the education I had. I wouldn't be the person I am. I'd be a very different person and my life would be very different. But I got lucky in the sense of in the lottery battle, I had my parents who were ambitious people, who were people that said, we're going to give you the best life we can give you on this earth. And every single day I take that and I love that. Like this, you can't take that from me. Whether I'm in Perth or whether I'm in Sydney, whether I'm overseas, living somewhere else, like here, I'll say this, life is tough here. And I'm not saying discredit um, what's going on, but as easily as you are living your tough life right now, you could be living it much harder in a war-torn country and you could be going through something so much worse. So... I am just grateful for my life in general. Is there one thing or one person or one sort of aspect of life that you're grateful for? 
my mother. Because we are all grateful for mom and dad, bro. Mom and dad. I don't speak about my mom and dad, and I probably don't tell them this as much as I should. We should. We should. should, But mom and dad, I'm grateful for, bro. My mom, my mom hustled. And when I say hustled, my mom hustled to get me here. My mom literally came to this country. She came to this country and my mum was working two jobs. And I say two jobs, she was working night shift, she was working day shift to make sure that me and my sister went to school. I'll come back from school. You know what? My mum made sure I had food to eat. She made sure I could eat. In the mornings, you know, we made sure I went to school. My mum, all in the middle of doing this, she was making sure that she went to work. And every day I came and I said, Mum, can you buy me this game? You know what I had? I had that I had game. game. Mum, can you? I need these clothes. You know what I had? My mum made sure I got that. So... Bro, like it's you, you don't know what you've got until you've got you've been on the other side. It's kind of just um where I'm coming from, bro. So yeah, Tanaka, you um you were obviously born overseas. Yeah. So you already seen like that perspective of life where obviously when you get here you it's like a whole different like life. You know I was I, mean? I was born overseas too. You were as well? I came here when I was same, same age. How old were you? Sorry? Ten. I, I was, yeah, ten. ten. So you still you had a you had an idea of life. No, I, I had friends. To remember, bro. I had friends. Yeah. I, I still have friends. Like I speak to them. I have friends back home. Mad, bro. Yeah. See, pen pals, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I never had that. So I grew up here. I was raised here. You know, I never ever like I always knew about overseas being harder and stuff, whatnot. But, bro, the uh, first time I I ever witnessed that was Lebanon. Like when I went in 2018. It's the first time I ever left the country. I was 21 years old. I went by myself. I had some friends in Beirut. And I will never forget, bro. My brother, my, my uh, family friend picks me up. And we're driving back from the airport. And I'm just like, I know this place is, you know, cr- there's people on the cars and whatnot. But I was just, I was just green, you know. I was like, whoa. I, as much as people tell you, you can't until you feel it. You know what I mean? Like, you could tell me it was so hard, this, that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I go there, it's a whole different feeling. So I'm there and I'm like, bro, what's happening? He's got a scooter. There's a kid riding thing. Yeah. And then there's like a, they call them like the beggars, like, yeah. you know, the woman. And there's a lady, both her legs amputated. She's on a wheelchair and she's begging on the highway. Yeah. So I went to picture this being on the M5, basically. Yeah. And I'm like, that for me, was my first reality check. So I hear what you, I hear, you, uh, I hear what you're saying when you say you're grateful for your parents and for being here. Yeah. And I guess to just add on, on to that point, to give you a reality, like nowadays, bro, I wake up, jump in the shower, have a shower. Picking done. Hot water's done. Right, so we've done the hot water heater. Back, <laughs> uh, back in the day, for perspective, it's not that we didn't have hot water, but sometimes it just didn't work. So literally what would happen is you'd have to boil kettles of water and literally fill them up, fill them up, fill them up. And then you had to quickly yep. wash yourself. So I you had could have to, a yeah. People don't understand I, that. I, you know? I, had a, I had a funny one as well. In Turkey, when you went to go do a shit yeah. in my village, in the like, you could have flush. Yeah, nah. You don't know which shit, like which, do our business in a hole in the ground and then you're, yeah and then your your flush was a hose you had a yeah, hose yeah, next yeah. to the toilet you, <laughs> quick shot off yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you hose it down you hose your butt and you're bro, done with no simple things bro. Yeah, bro. like simple i've seen things. things like my grandparents didn't have electricity when they lived out in the farms the, the whole walking for water thing i know it's like a joke that people might make like oh, I used that's to walk real for, but that's li- like legitimately like real and of course, the country is developed. Like we have a city and we have a CBDs and everything like that. Like it's not extreme. Not but even the person that lives in the city, mm. they still have it hard. But like I, I appreciate the little things in life. And like I, I laugh at it. For example, like my ideal date with like my missus isn't even going out to dinner in the city, sitting and all that. Like, bro, Fancy schmancy. Bro, do you know what we love? We love just going to the butcher, buying some meat and staying at home and cooking it yourself. Like, we love it. Like... It's so simple, like there's no effort to it. But what a missus now, bro. You made me want a missus now, guys. <laughs> it's the little things, man. And, and you ask yourself, like, why do I appreciate the little things? It's because, you know, like, He's you're in a fortunate man. position. He put, he put me in the feels, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they take yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He put, not just the missus thing. Like, since he started talking, when he talked about his mum, I'm like... <laughs> yeah, we all have to say what we're but grateful yeah, for. yeah, man, like, what I'm grateful for, that's pretty much it summarised, bro. Mems. So we'll move on to Mems. You want me to go? I'll go. Hit me. Tell me what but you are I, grateful for. If TK didn't give his answer, I would have said the exact same thing. He stole the words right out of my mouth. It's the same thing. It's having the opportunity. What? Speaking to your mic, bro. Can you not hear me? No, like, look I can at, hear him. <laughs> I can't hear him properly. Anyway, yeah, go on. It's, it's having the opportunity to live in a place where I don't have to worry where my next meal is going to come from. I don't have to worry, you know, whether I'm going to have a shower or not. I don't even have to worry if I'm going to make a home safe. Those aren't things that are, that are at the front of my mind. I don't have to worry, you know, 
I think everyone yeah, watching yeah. this podcast is the same, can relate yeah, because like your shoes will get stolen. Yeah, yeah. Your iPhone like, will get stolen. Like, yeah, you might run into an SJ, like, could happen. <laughs> but, like, not like, the end of the world. Like, like, you could probably bash the SJ. You end up being <laughs> mates with them, bro. I'm mates with them now. <laughs> like, I'm just, like, I'm grateful for the same things. I'm just great. It's going to sound controversial, but if you let me land, it will make sense. But land. I'm probably not going to land. But I'm grateful that I'm a man. Nothing controversial about that. Nothing controversial. I'm grateful that. I, that that, you know, I get to live this life as a man and I get to, you know, fulfill duties and I get to, and I have an opportunity to, to, you know, to, I can't, yeah, you can't I, get I the know, words out. I can't get the words. <laughs> I know like, exactly what you're grateful but for. But you know, you know what I'm grateful for, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm grateful course. that I can be a provider and we have this amazing ability to, you know, create families out of nothing. We have this amazing ability to adapt to, to situations and, and, and I'm just grateful for life itself. You know, the, the beauty of nature, the beauty of life and fuck anyone that wants to change that. You know, the natural way of life. It ain't going to happen. It, it's happening. <laughs> it ain't going to happen here, man. <laughs> Not at the couch. Nah, yeah, like, look, TK took the words right out of my mouth, man. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm everyone that knows me and knows me very well knows that I'm very, very grateful because I've come from... You are. You are very grateful, I've, honestly. Yeah, I, I grew up in a shit situation. I put myself in shit situations and I've pulled myself out like... Um, that's what I'm, I'm grateful that I've got a very strong state of mind. That's something that I didn't develop on my own. It was gifted to me. And it's an insult if you don't use that gift. So if you have that gift, make the most of it. I love that. What am I grateful for? I'm grateful for you, boys. <laughs> that too. You know what? You know what? Hold on. Yeah, actually, we just had a meeting, by the way. We yeah, had a nice little meeting. I am grateful for this whole organization. I'm grateful that I get to do this every Monday. Legit, legit. And I call it a job. But it's not a job because I love it. And when people ask me what I do for a living, this is definitely one of the things that I mention. Yeah, and I'm grateful it. for the boys that I've met. I'm grateful for the friendships that we formed. It started off just me and Sui knowing. Like I, I just knew Sui and now I know TK who's become you know, fucking whole, brother. You know the whole army now, bro. Yeah, TK's become a we brother. We had like 10 people here like Arnold's, 20 minutes ago. Arnold's become a brother to me. Mo. Red and blue, <laughs> red and blue. Oh, Frankie the young, Frankie the young, and uh, G Jorginho and Eldon. You know, yeah, all the boys have just become brothers. <laughs> Say no to racism. <laughs> we can't ever be too serious, eh? <sighs> but nah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very grateful, and especially meaning this crew. That's probably one of the highlights of my year. Um, what am I grateful for, bro? I'm grateful for probably everything. Tanaka, Mem said the same things that I would probably say, but. Man, I got cousins overseas that, wallah, bro. I got one cousin, my best friend's like my twin, literally. Just a bit older than me, but literally like twins, personality, looks. And bro, he's been stuck in Lebanon. He can't come here. Like, there's no way for him to come here. It's I've tried everything. I'm very grateful that I have a job. I'm very grateful that I have, bro, the best family ever. Like my family, if you meet my family, you would know. And probably my family's probably watching this. Bro, my uncle overseas, my uncle's here. You know, their wives, even their wives are like, Bro, they're like the best ever. They help me with everything I need. I was raised Ace. by cracker uncles, bro. You know Ace as well. Ace are, bro. Probably you think Ace is just a barber, but bro, it's more than that. When you go into that shop, it's a therapy. Um, he's like my older brother as well. But yeah, I'm grateful for everything, bro. We have clean water. You know, we have electricity. You know, if you have a bill, you can always sort it out somehow. We're able to have an income, make money, work. Bro, we're able to live out our dreams. And in the next few years, you'll see us living out our dreams. You know, people think that this is a whole dream, but we have so much more to this brand and building everything. But I'm also grateful for Ajiba and the people that follow Ajiba, bro. Because I swear, bro, sometimes people message me. I just, I laugh, bro. I love it. Yeah, then we're nothing, bro. Yeah, we're nothing, bro. But, but yeah, bro, I'm certainly grateful for all the actual things that we have, the essentials that we... Like, take for granted sometimes. Yeah, we take it for granted, bro. For like COVID time. Uh, not even a sense, like COVID time, we were fighting for toilet paper. It just shows you how weird bro, humans we were laughing, are. Bro, I was laughing at that. I was, I was laughing at the toilet paper. I was like, bro, if you're in some shit, the last thing you worry about is your <laughs> shitting paper. <laughs> and these blacks are running through. But that's human nature, bro. Yeah. It's like a sort of thing that everyone runs into and whatnot. But yeah, definitely grateful for everything, bro. We're very, very lucky. Well, like, the videos I watch of these people overseas, bro, could be anywhere, man. It's crazy, bro. And the, my family overseas, like... Bro, we're, f we're so freaking lucky. This country, I know people want to say this and people want to say that, but this country is very, very, like, it's, beautiful it's a safe country. haven for us, bro. And they might not uh, believe in what we believe and agree with what we agree, but we just do our due diligence. We do our part. You know, we can teach them and be good people and they can learn off that. 
And even though they probably still be against us, why not? You know, we're always going to be some sort of target. But it's fine, bro. We're very happy to be living in these four wars. Very, very grateful. Um, and yeah, bro, alhamdulillah for everything. Boys, I have another question. I know we're grateful for Sydney and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the million dollar question. Here it is. I'm going first. <laughs> all right, boys. The I've question is... i about this too. <laughs> would you live overseas? Tomorrow I'll go. Oh my God. Let me finish the question, bro. <laughs> you do the clipping. You know how hard this is. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a funny one. <laughs> Ready? Would you live overseas? And uh, why would you live overseas? And where would you live? If you were to move tomorrow, like right this second tomorrow, I'd say to here, brother, this is your startup. Go. British Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, Vancouver, Ooh, yes, yes, Canada. Yes, yes. Tomorrow. Yes. Okay, so explain to one sec. The you and your yes, yes. Hey, hey. What's I know Colombia is Colombia, but anything else, what's the reason? The British Frenchies, Col- no, baby. No, 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 no. That's one country that I mentioned. What? Canada. British Columbia, Vancouver. What the hell is that? I don't know. me. It's Canada. Canada. Okay. Oh, seriously. It's, it's a state of Canada. It's like more chill. It's like a very chill Brother, place. Brother, I'm going to send you videos. Okay. Okay. I'll, I won't move there. If, yeah. Okay. Let's say I woke up tomorrow morning and... Ooh, Ooh. What? I'm gonna have to edit that one out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, balls, my balls dropping. <laughs> um, Grateful for puberty. If, if I woke up tomorrow, <laughs> still have, I'm still going through it. If I woke up tomorrow and I had a hundred million dollars in my bank account, or one million dollars in my bank account, I'll, I'll leave it at one million. I'm not a millionaire yet. I will be soon. Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, and I could move anywhere. I'd buy a cabin. In this place called British Vancouver, uh, uh, British Columbia, Vancouver, in the woods, Canada. Okay, grab any girl that wants to come, whichever you want to be my wife. Yep, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever wants to volunteer, you might be in some trouble. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just here looking out for you. <laughs> yeah, go on. He doesn't know. <laughs> Chop saw this. That I will speak. We'll speak. But yeah, you, you grab. Um, I will you want to partner with uh, you, of course. Yeah, of course, let's, of course. You're speaking you, nice context. Look, look, I know I've, I've had my opinions on this couch and I've told you like, I don't want to get married, but that, that's, it's got its other reasons. But if if I reach that goal and I was able to, I will move into this cabin away from everyone, stable internet connection. 5G <laughs> boys. Yeah, yeah, 5G <laughs> stable internet connection. Hey, mate, why is my internet not working? <laughs> and just live out my days as a hermit. Why do I want to do that? Another option is a coffee shop on the Amalfi Coast, a local, live in the... Live. Yes. That's, sec- that's option two. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's option two. But the reason I want to do that is because I'm so sick of, you know, this 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 rat race that we're in, this, you know, this this life that we live in Sydney. I think that the Sydney life is so fast paced. Shoma! Love that guy. Um, the Sydney life is so fast paced and it's, it's, it's not for me. It's not who I am. It's not where I feel comfortable but willing to endure the stress because a life away from big crowds you know oh it's the greatest just, thing just relax so i sit here bro you, yeah yeah you, you <laughs> and that one person that you just you can spend every day with oh, straight out bro i'll say this now from the bottom of my heart finding your person's the best thing in the world finding your person's, yeah it is it's really good isn't someone it? plays sad music so <laughs> hello darkness my old friend <laughs> Um, we're in the process. Yeah, we yeah, might yeah. be in the process. Like, like, like you, yeah, you and you and your person, just a quiet life in solitude, no societal pressure, no. I get that. You know, like you, you're free. Freedom. I think freedom is the goal that a lot of people should. Everyone wants for. freedom. 100%. You don't aim to be happy. Happy is not a, happy. <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> Go on, son. It's a cigar. Go on. It's Kate. a cigar. It's a, yeah. The, <laughs> happiness isn't the goal. Freedom is the goal, and yeah, I'd use. I'd, I'd move out of this city to be free because I don't think Sydney is a city where a lot of people can achieve freedom. Could you be can't. true. TK? Oh. The West. The West is not a place where the you West can achieve freedom. It's a good way to clarify yeah. it. Yeah, sorry. What's I'd like I to actually... I'm very interested in to know where you would go. Oh, yeah, sorry. Option three, Amsterdam. Yeah. With Joe Rogan? <laughs> <laughs> You tried our ayahuasca, hey, J- bro. J- Jamie, pull up, pull up that bear that terrorized Amsterdam. <laughs> Me, a villa in Spain somewhere. Oh yeah, senora, senora. Yeah, a villa in Spain somewhere. Yes. I want the summer vibe in Spain, and I want to be a flight away from Old Trafford. Despite how much it breaks my heart. Oh, here we go. Club. Here we go. When I said where do I want to live, I don't want to live in England because the weather. Fuck. Ah, uh, not for me. Fought uh, that. Remember that video I sent you today? The, the yeah. plane fucking <laughs> yeah. shithole. Not for me, but I want to be close enough 
suck and pop in and out. But I think the biggest thing that would stop me moving is my family, bro. Like, not they would stop me. They, they do whatever you want. You just can't leave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't leave them. Yeah, they, they do whatever you want, like support you, love you behind you 100% of the way. Um, but I don't think I could just leave. Like, I live about an hour away from my family at the moment. And even I find that difficult at times because there's times when I want to go see them and I don't necessarily go. There's times when I'm like, I want to do this. I want to be around a lot more, but just the location and it's an hour is a little bit too much. So yeah, man, mm. somewhere in Spain for me. What about you, Sui? I know Sui's one already. Oh, um, Qatar. He's going to yeah. manifest it. Yeah. I'm manifesting the shit out of this, bro. Um, I didn't think I would ever say this place before my uncle moved there. Obviously, I never knew what the place was. I was like, yeah, it's probably just the desert, you know, like whatever. There's rich people there. But Qatar, bro, it really surprised me when I went the first time. It really surprised me when I went the second time. But when I went to the World Cup, bro, it was a whole different ball ballgame. Um, I'd move to Qatar probably. It's, uh, it's easy to say you would do it, but I'm the same as you. But I've got family. I've got friends here. Bro, my friends and my family are my life. Like the day my mates got married and stopped coming over every day, it was like a big dent in me. It was like, can you imagine if like we weren't doing this? <laughs> yeah, oh, bro, oh, brain cells, fuck. brain cells finished. Like I wouldn't, it would be mm. very hard, bro. Allah. And that's why I tell you, it's a very like it's very therapeutic because we actually get to hang out and speak. Yeah, I tried to cancel today's episode. Yeah, you're not having our kids. Yeah, you know that because we're consistent. But bro, it'll be Qatar, man. I just think that Qatar is so clean, um, bro. The 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 way they make life so easy. Of course, you need to have money which is the same thing everywhere. But, you know, the way that you have, like, a maid at home that looks after your kids, allows you to go work, you know, and the maids aren't bad people, you know. They're not going to teach you things that are... Teach your kids things, sorry, that are not good for them. I, I'll just cut in a heartbeat, bro. If I could find a job there or something, like... Only if my family would come with me, but my uncle lives there, and my uncle, first year, loved it. Second year, started to really hate it. And we spoke about this. We said, you don't really, like... You could never be happy. You're always going to be a human in the end I, of the day. I, th I think your uncle's homesick. That's the... Oh, definitely. Yeah, he yeah. calls me and he tells me, bro, I need a V. Mm. Like, I need a V. And I need a man bro, I want to meet your uncle. I need... Yeah, I, use, <laughs> I, I promise you, that'll be the greatest episode we ever do is if he sits down and actually mm. speaks while he talks to me. When's he retiring? Yalla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he retires, bro. Um, but, yeah, he's up to me. I just want a V. I just want to go past Billy's Kebabs. You know, on Woodford Road. I just want to ride my bike, just the hill shops. Yeah, he loves his nostalgia. He's yeah. very like, I don't know how you say it, like down to earth, bro. Yeah. Very down to earth. And it's crazy because over like there, yeah, over there, listen to this, right? He f he flies everywhere. Bro, that guy, I remember the Russia World Cup, they private jet with the Qatar Amir, right? Private jet, cracker, lands, Maybach, the doors open like that. I don't know what. My uncle's like, bro, I fucking hate all this shit. I don't care about this shit. Well, and I'm like, Maybach? I've never seen one in my life. What about one time you messaged me? I was with you, I think you messaged your uncle. You go, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm in Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, where are you? He's like, oh, I'm just in Switzerland. Uh, so and so. I don't like to get into details because it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but they're like, oh yeah, I'm just in Switzerland with one, two, three. And I'm like, bro, yeah, he's been everywhere. Amsterdam, Russia, Croatia. Amsterdam. Like, yeah, he's been in Amsterdam. They, yeah. they love, they go. Like Lebanon. He's been everywhere, bro. And like, he tells me, I just want to come home and just see my, like, be with my parents, watch my nephews grow up. So I understand the other side to it. But if I could leave and everything in a perfect what? world, Qatar. I did a, I did a long, I did a long haul overseas myself. And I actually did find that I missed my family and my friends a lot. So I get that. I told you that on your last like, week, yeah, you're going to yeah. feel it. Really yeah, feel yeah, it. Yeah, Like you really, really, like when you go... And, you know, you, you have all the, this romantic idea in your mind that you're going to be away from everyone and, you know, it's going to be the funnest moment of your life, bro. By the end of it, you actually sit there and you and you, and you you miss people. Like, I missed you boys. Yeah, like, yeah. I, missed, I missed my mom, my dad. Like, I miss my bed. Bro, you know, you know what's... My can I, bed. Can I say something to you? You know what's weird? If, I don't know if you've ever been overseas for a long time, but hmm. when you come back, your room is different. Like, why is the window there? Bro. Yeah, why is the I, window... Fr while I came home, I'm like, Mum, why are the window frames white? Did we bro, paint them? I came, like, we painted them two years ago. <laughs> bro, I came back. My bed looked weird. The smell was different in different, my room. The, the shower felt different. Like, it was just... It was weird. It actually took me, like... I'm going to say it took me a solid month to adjust. Really? It, yeah, bro. I was going for a long time. How long did you go for? Five weeks? 
close to 10 hours, 10 weeks. Oh, dude, yeah, that's, that's yeah. fucked. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. nah, it takes me a day to adjust. Yeah, no, bro. It took me a month, like, driving. I couldn't drive. What's the first thing you do when you get back from overseas? Like, the first thing, when you land, what's the first thing you do? I bro? unpack, because I know if I don't unpack... It's not going to happen. It's not going to The first thing, like, you got to unpack, do bro. Any travelers, don't. <laughs> I'll unpack. I'm unpack the same when as you. Well, I'm the same home. as you. Because I don't want to see it tomorrow morning when yeah, I'm jetting. Yeah, because first if I see it... Straight into the washing machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, bro. Because the whole closet's in the oh, thing, bro. Oh, bro, my fucking, my, like, my suitcase stank, bro. I'm yeah. not even going to lie to you. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, yeah, my no, suitcase. No, no, but mine does suit, and I'll wash my clothes before yeah, I lift it. Yeah, yeah, right. But it's just yeah, travelling, bro. That's what happens. My shoes stank, nah, everything the stank. first thing I do, bro, yeah. it's a ritual, cuz. Get out of the airport. My mum obviously always picks me up, because it's your mum. Picks me up. She's like, yalla, she's trying to, everyone's holding my bags and shit. Oh, calamity, That's the calamity. best when you come Yeah, yeah, everyone, everyone loves yeah, you yeah. for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, what you get like, me? <laughs> man, and it's yeah, like, the, and then the tap's start, leaking, we got to fix it. And then, then they start opening the duty-free bags. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just go straight to the convenience store in the airport and I get a V and I have a cigarette on no smoking, in front of the no smoking sign in the airport. No one fuck given. But I'm sitting there having a cigarette. Then I get back. When I got back from the World Cup, bro, it was like, I think I got home at like 10 o'clock at night. And it was like a long flight and I, it was business class, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. No, 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 no. Because you know why? I'll tell you what. Weed business. flex, but all right. I got, I got business class too, by the way. And Man. by the way, guys, I've been training you, Devin. <laughs> yeah, you know. I'm, I'm, well, I didn't mean it like I'm going to drive home. I in meant my, to, I meant I'm going to I drive home in my, I'm going to drive home in my fifty thousand dollar car after this. <laughs> That's what yeah. you did. Listen, I meant to, as in I had a good sleep. But you still get back knackered, bro. You still like. I've, I, no. I've got a question. You yeah. flew in business class. Yeah, I flew it as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing that I will call out: I can probably never fly economy ever again. It's the worst. Why? It's the worst. I can never worst. ever fly. So the way I got business class, you boys know, I'm going to share it. I walked up to the desk to check in. My flight was from London to Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi to Sydney. My first leg, London to Abu Dhabi. I was checking in. I, I always get aisle seat. I have severe, severe, like I've got problems. You have to have I've got problems. I can't sit still, bro. I, I got to get up and walk every hour, like one hour. I'm opposite, bro. I'll yeah, yeah. No, I've got problems. Like my, when they put me window seat, I stand up and I just wait at the back of the plane <laughs> for the whole six hours. I don't give a fuck. But, so I wanted an aisle seat. I couldn't get it. I got a window seat on self-check-in. So I went up to the desk, gave him my ticket and I was like, hey, can I please like, can I please have an aisle seat? Like, is there an aisle seat available? Like, I don't care where it is. Just I just want to be on aisle or something. Like, I don't care if I have to pay extra. I just like, I really need to stand up. I get uncomfortable on flights. She looked at me, she goes, yeah, no worries, give me a second. Clickety clackety, clickety clackety on her computer. And then hands me a ticket and goes, you've been upgraded to business class. You can go straight through there and you go bro, through there. Yeah. what a feeling. You go, bro, I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Took my bags. Oh, bro, I got through. Express security. Didn't have to wait. Just went straight through the security. Bro. I got into the airport. Bro, you walk into business class. They 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 greet you differently. Cause different gravy. They greet like the economy greeting. Hi, welcome and to the flight. So you safe. went from London to the to, to Abu Dhabi. How long was that flight? Eight hours. Eight hours. That's cracker. That's, that's a decent. Cracker. That's a decent. That's mad, flight. bro. What do you mean? When, the, when you're in economy, they you know they look at your ticket. They go, "Yep, just straight up the back end that way." Yeah, just fuck off. Yeah, yeah when you're in business class, they go, "Come with me, Let sir." Let me put you on my shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah come with me, sir. <laughs> I'll walk you over to your seat. You know, yep, yeah, right here. I'll be back with your refreshments right before we take off. No problem. Is these FE phones do you need? Yep. Okay, cool. Sickest thing. The best thing in the world. And then, so I got my hot towel, I got my orange juice. Bro, you're like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just ordering everything you could. Yeah, I'm looking at, I'm flicking through the menu, bro. I'm looking at the menu, I'm like, steak pond fray with polenta? <laughs> What? what the fuck is that? <laughs> what? Bro, I had dessert wine once, yeah? And I don't drink wine because like, I'm not oh, African. The, the, the bubbly? But what happened was, I was, I was that... You could say hi, but I wasn't like actually hi. I was just like that. Happy. Happy it was my first time ever. And I'm on the way back to Sydney, 14 hours from Qatar, business class, cracker, all right? Yeah. And the lady's talking to me and I'm watching Ocean's Eleven, right? You know, the I watched the same movie the on the <laughs> <laughs> Bro, the best. The best. The one in Amsterdam, yeah? Yeah, I'm yeah. watching Ocean's Eleven. I'm creaking back this stuff. And the lady's talking to me and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She comes back with this cup, looks normal. Bro, I take a sip. I was like, bro, what the fuck is that? I took my hero. I was like, what the hell is this? She's like, oh, so you said yes to the, our, our special dessert wine, this, that. I was like, bro, I don't drink, I don't drink here. She's like, oh, I'm sorry, this, that. But yeah, it, it's it's very, very hard. It's different gravy. So that that also happened to me. They offered me something, a little yeah. whiny one, and I took it. Woo! This <laughs> guy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hey, bring it back. <laughs> Is it free? <laughs> free. 
Um, can I, I get another bottle? Yeah, uh, bro. So I sit down. I'm looking. I'm flicking through the menu. I'm looking at the TV. I'm. Uh, bro, I'm spinning it. I'm You're bro- overwhelmed. I'm a brokey. It's my first time there, brother. <clears throat> It's I'm a different just, I, feeling, bro. I, I'm sitting, I'm looking at all the leg room. I'm looking next to me, bro. All these, like, no one, no shoulder, no, like. I'm just doing these ones. Yeah, you get that bro. rich white guy with white hair that yeah, gives you yeah, death stares. Yeah, but he's like. How the fuck did you get Yeah, but I can't see him. You can't see him. Yeah, the walls are. Okay, fuck yeah, off, man. Get out of here. And then oh, my mind was blown when the food came out, okay? Well. When I ordered the food, I was watching, oh, same thing. I was watching a movie. I was blanketed up, legs out. Legs out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm watching, it was the World Cup as well, and the games, I could watch the games yes. in the sky. I was watching Belgium versus. Uh, Belgium versus Croatia. And they put out the food and she puts it in front of me. And the one thing I hate about airplanes is the fucking the cutlery and the plates they give the food in. Chat. Yuck, man. Chat, plastic. Yuck. This one's in a glass it. plate, Achi. But they give you real cutlery, like yeah, a, yeah. a plate. <laughs> none peasant, none peasant. Metal knives, metal forks, like, like you, you're actually dining. And then as soon as you're done, your tray's gone. In economy, you finish your food, bro. You're sitting with your tray for hours, hours until the yeah, lady yeah, comes until back. someone comes around and remembers. Oh fuck, I got to do my job. The plate's gone as soon as it's finished. You you, you want seconds? Yeah, yeah, I'll bring you seconds. Yeah, the the best, bring you seconds. The champagne was flowing. I got off in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> the champagne was yeah, brother, I got off in Abu Dhabi. I couldn't walk. <laughs> it was wobbling. Yeah, yeah. I, I could, might miss my flight, <laughs> but I could not walk because like I. I started drinking like the last three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm exposing myself. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you can jump out. It's all right. No, I'm, I'm leaving it in. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I walked off the plane in Abu Dhabi. My next flight was an hour and a half. Snangled. I was like this. I was like, ah, fuck. <laughs> the most depressing flight of my life. Oh, the <laughs> next flight. <laughs> because it's 14 hours, baby. 14 hours. And it's economy. Drunk. <laughs> oh, he, got, yeah. he got humbled real quick. <laughs> Within hours, <laughs> I was here. An hour and a half later, brother, I was here. Yuck, man. I was here. I got off and I sat in the toilet for an hour because I did not want to sit next to that guy anymore. <laughs> I'm like, who are you? Get out of my private space. Bro, worst feeling ever. So the lesson I took away from that, I Don't got home. It. No, no, I got home, and I said, I'm gonna fucking work my ass off. I'm gonna open up a Qantas points account and start earning Qantas. I gotta points. do that, bro. My business. I'm gonna work my ass off because I'm never flying economy <coughs> again. <clears throat> Ever again. Cheat code to do it's frequent fly points. That's what, that's what I'm trying to do. But the other cheat code to do is break the matrix and make money and never and well, get a private jet. So yeah. Yeah, but I be Whatever the song is. Um, yeah, it's very hard to go from just the last thing we talk. If you want to talk about anything else, let us know. But yeah, business class is a disease, bro. Well, it's very dangerous. It's, it's, it's very, bad. very dangerous. On the way back, on the way back from the World Cup, I was with uh, Mosey. Shout out to Mosey, uh, my uncle's brother-in-law. And we're walking in, and we're walking uh, thing. It's like a whole separate section, cuz. Yeah, like you're literally separated from everyone. You walk in and the guy grabs you. Hello, sir. Open my boot of the car. Yeah. Took my bag. Took me in, and I'm like, yeah, we're talking about Ronaldo, Messi. The World Cup was on. You know what I mean? It was going off, and yeah, yeah. He goes, there you go, sir. Have a good flight. I was like, what do you mean? What happened? Like, what just happened? He's like, oh, everything's done. You can go to your like, you can go on the plane. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Like, and, I, sorry, go and like hang out by the gate. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, yeah. But and full, the, the lounge as well. The lounge is sick oh, as well, bro. Oh my god, bro, it's fucked. <laughs> But like, anyway, I'm sitting. Who did I see in behind? Uh, in front of Lecky. Oh, Matt Lecky, yeah, yeah. The yeah. guy that scored the goal against Denmark to qualify Australia to the next round. And I don't even know who. I don't know nothing because I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh yeah, Lecky's yeah, cracker. It's just a whole different ball game, bro. And it's do, very expensive. Do you know bro. what's a whole different ball game? Is first class. First class. Nah, it's fucked. First class is upstairs. No, no. But my uncle, the whole different ball game. See, yeah. first class is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the jet my uncle goes on mm-hmm. with, you know, whatever. It's he's lucky to me, cuz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah, like yeah. he will laugh at first class. <laughs> yeah. He's like the, he's got sections for his birds, you oh. know that you know the um the the, the macaw the uh, you know that the no the the whole I don't know what they are bro they're proper like they're million dollar birds cause they're big money mm. he's just got like fourteen of them and he's he's got sections for them Michael's like I'm a fucking peasant this guy <laughs> <laughs> they literally they that, they call you broke without even saying a word yeah they just say yeah. salam alaikum and yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, that's your broke I'll see you later <laughs> that, that, that um the Amir of Saudi Arabia you want a Mercedes oh here yeah. address. <laughs> that address, that that address. <laughs> yeah, that's too rich, bro. How about yeah, bro? That's, yeah. I, was, I wanted to get that off my mind, boys. Everything that's happening in the world and how grateful we are Football's and the back. traveling. Football's, Football's back this back. week. I hate international break. Um, Turkey qualified. And sh- Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The Scots did as well. Yeah, Scotland. And, we, and we beat Croatia to do it. And Croatia's team. Anyway, that's next week. Next week. I'm, I'm not on next week. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not here. <laughs> Sir Jim Ratcliffe. You're not here, yeah? <laughs> 
I'm not here permanently. Lewis Hamilton is <laughs> going to give Rashford that $800,000 a week contract. I can't wait, baby. For 12 years. That's fucking trot, baby. I can't wait. It's going to be Mudrik or Rashford. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, important thing to remember. Be grateful. Love your family. Be a good person. Donate money um, in any way that you can. Please, if you're going to protest, protest peacefully and just be smart about it. And only 11% of our viewers are subscribed. Free Palestine, bro. The only 11% of our viewers are subscribed to the channel. I wanted to say Free Palestine and you yeah. brought up the subscription. Free yeah. Palestine, by free the way. Palestine, and don't forget to subscribe, bro. Like, Anjad, what are you doing? I know if you got to the end of the episode, you really love us. Yeah. Just hit the subscribe button, make the YouTube account. 40 minutes you sat here and watched us and you're not subscribed. Or I'll one-up you. If you are subscribed and you haven't shared with your friends, you st- I know I'm asking a bit much. I'm, I'm asking a bit much. Yeah, every, no, every, really. every, but like to share it with your mate, you know, if you know a mate that would. We're going to do shameless plugs here. You know, like, <laughs> straight out. Yeah, if you need a yeah. line, hit me up, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Love you all. <laughs> Just rave around. <laughs>